All right, everybody, we are back. We are here with Jessica Milagros. This is the first video, week one recap uh, for BB25. Um, this has been an awesome season so far. We're going to break it all down. I want to get just introduce yourself. First, I want to say, uh, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts of the week, uh, you know, who you're cheering for, just everything that went down. I want you to break it down in the chat. Let us know. Uh, all right. So we got Jessica Milagros here. Uh, very, very good friend of mine. Love her very much. Jessica, break it down. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? What's going on? And why are you here? <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. It's uh <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a good answer cuz yeah, I don't know why you're here either, but That's good that's good, right? Yeah. Why 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 am I here, God? I don't know. <laughs> no, um I'm just like you said, you you pretty much said it. I'm Jessica, uh Jessica Milagros for those of you who may know or watched my season of Big Brother. I was on season 21. Um that would be considered the lost season. Um yeah, and I, I also recap uh, BB25. I actually been recapping Big Brother on my YouTube channel for the past, it's going to go on for almost four years. It's almost been four years since I've been out of the house. So came in and now my little YouTube show just uh, recaps this mess that I was once in, that we were once in. So Yeah, time flies, man. It's crazy, huh? It does. It, it does. It, I'm, I'm actually very surprised that it's been... That it's been four years. Yeah, time work. flies. I know it's it's true. It's true. So, um, what do you think of the cast? Like, what do you think of the cast so far? We had sixteen people move in. Uh, by the way, great introduction. I'm going to put the link below to uh, Jess's uh, channel, so make sure you follow that as well. Uh, we do watch parties on Kick, uh, so I'm going to put the link down for Kick if you want to watch the episodes or you know hear thoughts in the episode. You'll see other alum in there. Uh, I'll put the link there if you want to follow that channel and, and join the conversation as well. Uh, but yeah, I want to say, uh, what do you think of the house guests? Sixteen house guests move in. Let's get right into it. Then all of a sudden, 15. yeah, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Sari shows up at the end of episode one big shocker i knew some people knew she was going to be on um what are your thoughts on that seeing sari on the show it's you know it's uh i, wa I want to know your thoughts with sari being there the twist she's involved with with, with her son being in the house i, I want to hear it all i want to know your thoughts on all of it yeah well you know what like first off i i i'm actually really loving the cast um i think they did a very good job in casting um the people that they did, it was a very diverse group of people, which is great. Um, and and when I mean diverse, I mean, I just don't mean race, you know, race-wise, but just age-wise. And, you know, this year we have um, someone who is hearing impaired so or, or deaf, you know. And I, I just find it to be a really great, well-rounded cast. Um, yeah, that being said... They're they're all a little bit of a mess right now. I'm I'm actually on no sleep. It's like team no sleep because I have been watching feeds and it's just been really really hard to um, just go from one conversation to another conversation. They don't sleep, mm -hmm. and but but I'm I'm loving it. I feel and like we said before with the cast assessments, I just I I felt that it was going to be more of a a, a BB10 style type of you know, type of play. And I, and I think that's what we're getting. We're getting two divides, you know, two divides right. in the house, like two, like two literal sides. Like, I mean, it's pretty much split, um, in the middle. And I think it's funny because it's literally split by old folks and young folks. I mean, old folks, you know, yeah, but yeah. you know, in, in BB comparison, I guess it would be like old versus, you know, young. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I'm feeling and the Julie, cast. Of course. I'm feeling the cast too. I actually really like it this year. Um, I even said preseason. There's enough like quote unquote older players uh, that they can make a move. They can do something this year. They might actually come together because you know it's always the same thing every year. You see, you know the the older um, uh, older house house guest always gets voted out first or you know near the beginning, and it's but. You know, then they or they get carried to the end, whatever it is. So it's nice to see that there's enough of them to be like, hey, listen, man, we can actually come together and do something. Let, let's let's like put our, the fate in our own hands, you know. And I like that. So uh, I hope it happens. I like to see. I like to see what I see. I'm loving Felicia. Love, 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 love Felicia. I mean, Sari is is an all star uh, in her own. Um, love Sari. Here's the thing I gotta say though. I don't. I I like the twist. I like the twist at the son and mom thing. 
I just wish it wasn't Suri. That's my thoughts on it. I wish it wasn't Suri involved uh, because I wanted to see her play the game on her own. I wanted to see <laughs> how she would do to come in without that information because the way it's played out, you know, there's Jared on one side, there's Suri on the other. Jared's feeding her all the information, told him, uh, told Suri about, you know, Kirsten in the five and, and all that stuff, which gave Suri the, the information to move forward and, and you know, and, and all that stuff. I just wish Suri was able to do this on her own without getting that information on the other side to see how she really plays the game. Um, you know, and as someone that did go back a second time, I know the pros and cons of being a vet, you know, going back in, people are going to look at you differently. There's people in there that know who she is. So she immediately has that target on her, um, on that side of it. So I do understand that, that she's going to have some advantages and she's going to have some disadvantages, uh, being, being, you know, a known player in survivor and, and traders and all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. For those that aren't familiar, uh, Suri won Traders uh, US. She played Survivor, I don't know, like three, four times. I don't even know what it was. Two, three, four times, whatever it was. Four. Uh, she's a very good player. She's very, very good. I love watching her. loved watching her on the Traders. I think she's phenomenal. I think she's super amazing on all levels. I just wish I saw her play on her own. Um, I don't. I don't like how Jared's, you know, being able to is able to give her all the information that she normally wouldn't know. You know, being on that one side of the house, she would have to have gone and figured it out herself, which is giving her more of a chance to to sit back and and I wanted to see her go in and do her thing. Um, but also on the other side of that coin, with Jared being in there, you know, um, I, I don't. He's not a very good player. You know, Jared is not a very good player and that could also be a detriment to her, like where she's trying to protect Absolutely. him and, you know, she's worried about him. She's worried about herself. She has someone else to worry about. So there's pros and cons to both. I see both sides. Um, also, you know, the other thing I think her advantages are Jared's going to tell her every bit of information he knows unfiltered. So, you know, when you're in the big brother house and you know, Jess, when someone tells you something, even if they're with you, you're, you know, they're still playing their own game and it's like. Every bit of information you get, you have to filter what's true, what's not, what's right, what's wrong, who's really telling you the truth, who's not, who's really with who, who's not. When you have someone in there, like your own son, you know, you know they're not gonna they're not gonna lie to you. They're not gonna feed you the wrong information. They're gonna tell you what they know. Yes, this is a five person alliance. I'm in it. It's the real deal. Like it's it, it's not it's it's like a fact. It's not like I think there's a five person alliance. It's like no no no. Listen, I'm in this alliance. This is going on. This is happening. Um, and, and I think that's a massive massive advantage. The other side is Jared's a bad player, and I and I don't mean you know I mean it with all due respect. He he's atrocious. Of you do. He's absolutely <laughs> atrocious. If he gives her the wrong information because he's just having bad reads, she's gonna fall into that trap. You know, not a trap, but accidentally fall into that. You know, she's gonna be like, all right, well Jared's telling me it's the truth, and he's just atrocious, man. Oh my god, the things he does in there it just makes me laugh. But I like him. I do like him. So I know I went on a little rant there. Uh, about it what are your thoughts on Suri and her son being in there what are your thoughts on the twist I like the twist I like I said I just wish it wasn't Suri I wish I could see her play it's a very different game than Survivor there's feeds all the time and all that stuff I wanted to see how she could adapt which I know she would be able to regardless it is Suri we've seen her play other games she's amazing at what she does but yeah I just wish I would have seen it myself uh, without the the son in there what do you think yeah, I mean, I could t I could see all those sides. I think um, I would have also loved to see her play it. Um, I think it. I find it odd that people are not looking at her as this massive, you know, as this massive threat. Um, but she's done it beautifully in creating or letting other people lead as she guides like with with we see how she treats um jared so we know that when it comes to jared she's just like stop saying my name stop doing this stop doing that she's very like kind of like cutthroat when she's talking to yeah. him um but when she's talking to other people she kind of leads them a little bit differently right she's not as um as she's not as cutthroat she kind of makes people believe that their uh their idea was it her idea to begin with you know or her idea is their idea mm -hmm. you know um and i love kind of seeing that but you're right like i would have wanted to see uh suri kind of maneuver that and try to figure it out herself but i'm still enjoying um this process as well i'm very confused as pe as how to how people can't see 
the resemblance and the fact that Jared is constantly putting his foot in his mouth, you right. know, and saying things um, that just leads, it, it, it just leads to figuring it out, you know, and being like, well, come mm-hmm. on, this, this doesn't make sense. But at the same time, I really do love the fact that other people in the house know, other people being Izzy, but you know, that she does know, um, and that she does have people that she either has to watch out for, or there, there's a lot of things at play that she's juggling with because yeah, Jared is kind of a liability, mm-hmm. even though she's being fed this information, she still has to kind of figure it out all the while making sure that Izzy's good and not like losing her shit to, to the point where she gives up that information about them being, you know, connected. And I, I just kind of, I, I love, I love the whole mass action. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing too, is Izzy and Cor- does Corey know that they're, they're uh, related or he just knows she was on no. survivor. Okay. So he doesn't yeah, even know. He doesn't even know. Okay. So I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, which is very interesting with the Corey situation as well, that, that he can't put it together because weren't they uh, wasn't jared on the same like w- didn't they all weren't they all on the same island at one point in survivor did did jared go to visit i don't know what the thing is they know each other they not know each other i don't know no 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 okay. um i'm not well, a big survivor guy so no yeah i mean jared was one of the people that was on the island during the uh during one of her um family visits you know when the family came to the island but i mean that was such a long time ago true right it's it's depending on on what season Corey actually watched would he actually remember you know something like this but at the same time like we we get an episode like this you know this eviction this uh yesterday's episode as to like Kirsten, when she found out, you know, when Julie told her that uh, Suri and Jared uh, were mother son, where she was like, oh, my gosh, I like she was right. completely, uh, you know, just taken back. But then she said something about, oh, Jared said that they call him what? Like, J- I forgot. Jay something. Jay Bizzle. And, was it uh, something like that? And then and then they said, oh, yeah, and that's that's Suri's son's name. Mm hmm. Which is cr- like the like, guy just. It's like, dude, yeah. like, how did he just say this? How like that's what how I mean. People not figuring this out. He's sloppy, but I love it for Sari because that just puts an extra, mm-hmm. you know, that that is her her hurdle. Doesn't matter. You could have all the conversations in the world. It it didn't take long to find out that 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 five was the five. Like they hang out, like you can. Right. I mean, if they're all together all the time, are an alliance. Yeah. It's like um, on my season, I knew the six was a six. I might, I, I almost didn't realize that there was an eight, but I definitely knew that there was a six. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm not here, like red, like sitting down, you know, in front of Riley and saying, "This is your alliance. This person, this person. This, these people are wild." Oh, it is. You're just. I, yeah. I'm, <laughs> what do you what do you think the play is for izzy and Corey? so is so Corey knows sari i don't you know we're watching the episode and Corey's telling her like oh yeah i know how good you are and, and you know we got to come up with creative ways to get you out and why are you like i feel like people just open their mouths too much like that's the stuff you got to keep in your mind you know you're looking at her going okay i know you're a good player i gotta figure out how to get you out i don't know exactly how i'm gonna do it yet i gotta figure it out i gotta figure a way to get through all this and to get to you you say that in your head why why are these players just so open like izzy izzy knows the the relationship between um jared and and sari what's the play does she keep it to herself does she tell somebody you know people think like oh when she's gonna go out the door she's gonna say something i, I don't see like i don't see the benefit in her saying something on the way out like to me if i like say on my say on, on one of my seasons either whatever you can use bobby godfrey kevin whoever my writer dies on my season if i knew that they had a twist involved with them why would i tell 
the house on the way out to, to sink their game. It doesn't make sense. So everyone's like, oh, I can't wait for Izzy to, to spill it to everybody. I don't see the reason for her to do that. To me, it doesn't make sense. So do you think she tries to keep it in her pocket? It, like, how does she use this information? Like, I don't think she would, you know, uh, the only way I could see it working is if, say, she's on the block with Jared or she's on the block with Sari. That's the only way she can use it. Say, hey, listen, guys, listen. They are related, blah, 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 blah. But if, like, you know, Izzy's on her way out the door and she's sitting beside, I don't know, whoever, Matt or somebody. There's no reason for her to turn around and say, hey, listen, by the way, those two are related. Have fun, guys. See you later. It doesn't do anything. So um, how does she use this? Like, does she, how does she build off of this? She has this information. She hasn't done anything with it yet, which I think is the right move. I think if she would have came in right away and be like, hey, guys, these two, she could have been uh, in, a, in a really bad spot, um, obviously with Sari and Jared. And I think, you know, she it, it could have done worse. But I don't know. What, what is she going to do with this information? How does she use it properly? I, I don't, I honestly don't think she can. And the only way I see her spilling is literally by accident, like during one of her crazy spells, you know, like (laughs) this girl, the the girl has wilded, like wilded out quite quite a bit in the past few days. So, you know, she kind of goes through these spirals and, you know, she gets a little emotional and then she just starts acting a little... Uh, frantic and whatnot and series there to kind of like calm her down but you can kind of tell and especially with the diary rooms you can tell that this is like weighing on Siri as well Mm -hmm. um but here's the thing i think that using it and putting it in your pocket for a rainy day doesn't really gain much trust in the house because at this point you've known it for so long already that when you use it people are probably going to be more mad about right. you holding you know holding it's going to be like it. why now that yeah, why not right. day one exactly it's going to be like why not why didn't you just decide to work against them or whatever the case was you know um because if you're just using it while you're on the block people are going to be like well then you deserve to be on the block mm-hmm. because you're you played with them and and that was a twist where they were supposed to keep it a secret you know what i mean like so it kind of backfires i think yeah i just there's gotta be a, there's gotta be kind of like a um a chart where it's like where is it good to use this this info and, and when is it too late like when is it just like okay cool who cares you know there's got to be a, a part on that line that it's like eh, who cares I, at this point i think her her best bet was or was to find somebody else that she can gain a lot of trust with and let them know so that they could use it accordingly when it the right time mm-hmm. came you know like Corey I mean? or like, something it's time yeah it's like okay it's time to cut them loose you know mm-hmm. so let's you know let's plan this we already knew they were they were you know son mother and son so this is our time let's just have the other side take them out for us or whatever no. the case is or no door them for a double or wait or wait for a double do you see do you see Corey being the one to take out Suri? I, I have this feeling that it's, it's Corey and Suri are going to go at it uh, one way or not. Is it Corey? What's his name? Yeah, Corey, the survivor guy. Um, yeah. I, I feel like one of them is going to be the other one's downfall. I think because Suri knows he knows too much and he knows that Suri's a good player and they see each other as a threat in a different way. One way or another, they're a threat to each other. I feel like Corey Suri is the matchup that, uh, in my opinion, uh, she knows, well, the guy is open in his mouth. He's open in his mouth to saying, oh, I know how good you are and how creative you are and, and, and how this you are. Like He's telling her, if I'm in that house and somebody tells me, hey, listen, I know how good you are at this. I know you do this. I already know they know my playbook. I already know they know what I can do. They're a threat right there. You got to go. It's it's they, they got to go. They know too much. They're, they're too much information. See you later. You got to go. Uh, and the fact that he's telling her this, I think if Sari, if I'm in Sari's mind, she's thinking, okay, this guy knows too much. He's got to go. He's he's building something to come after me. That's the way I see it. Now, I want to talk about the night one HOH comps. Uh, the four people go on the block, the four nominees. And then uh, uh, Corey, I keep going to call him Cam. Corey goes to the nether regions. I mean, come on, man. Give it, get a better name. Like immediately, I think of like a crotch. You know what I mean? Like immediately. It's like, yo, where's he going? Like he's having a good time, you know? Uh, he's enjoying yeah, himself it's thoroughly. Like the nether what? Yeah. Okay. So, so the nether regions. That's where he's going, I guess. Who's, 
Who's nether region? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to know. Let's get let's get that info. Who's so region? he gets pulled away. See you later. He comes back the next day. Nothing happened. I mean, that we know of. I mean, I mean, nothing happens. Yeah. He's just gone. See you later. Uh, and he's back in. Like nothing happens. So uh, that was the night one nether regions. Um, and then Riley wins HOH because to take two people off. So who was it? It was Felicia, who I love. I love, love, love Felicia. Uh, she kills me. Cracks me up. Breaking all the mics. I know in, in BB Can. I don't know what it's like in BB US. Um, from what I remember, I think someone in production, if I remember correctly, told us that those mics are like 10 grand each, each. Uh, and I could be wrong on that. I remember someone in production telling me that she's broken like four or five of them. That's like 40, 50 grand, uh, it's right there. Wild. A lot of money, it's like super wild, a lot of money. Uh, but I don't know how, you know, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But, uh, anyway, uh, she breaks a lot of mics. Love her. She's hilarious. Everything she says is just, I love her, love her, love her, love her. First night we got Felicia, Kirsten, Jared, and Corey are the first four nominees. Riley wins HOH pulls off Corey and Jared, 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 mm-hmm. uh, pulls off Corey and Jared leaving Felicia, Kirsten, Unanimous vote, 13-0. to What do we think of that week one? I mean, it's week one. You know, people are probably just like, who cares as long as it's not me. But 13-0, to you'd think there'd be at least one vote somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, 13-0, to that's, you know, hopefully that's not on par to what's going to happen this season. Hopefully not everyone's just going to vote with the house kind of thing. I mean, it's week one. I mean, you can't really read too, too, too much into it. But 13 votes going one way is a lot. You know what I mean? Like, not even one friend. She doesn't have one friend in the house. It's just like, yo... Uh, I'm going to throw a vote, like not even one, you know, in week one. Yeah. You know what I mean? 13 I votes is a lot. At that point, someone should have just done a janky vote, you know, just to, you know, just mm-hmm. throw someone off or something, you know? It, like one vote. Um, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, at least a vote. Um, I I was very surprised because be, because the two sides are so, it's very clearly divided. It's not... You know, right. yeah, everybody gets somewhat along, roughly. Um, but you do know that there are two sides. So the fact that this was unanimous really didn't make yeah. any sense. Um, I really thought, and especially listening to some, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what happened since we lost the feeds, you know, the night before, pretty much all the night before, of like how... Kirsten wasn't able to kind of flip, you know, the the vote. It seemed like for from her from her speech, it didn't sound like she thought she was gonna go. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I feel like in her in her speech, it wasn't like you know, I've, it's been great getting to know you. You know, Felicia was uh, Felicia was the one who who was like, and if I go, I still love you. You know, you right. know stuff like that. Right. But C- Kirsten didn't even mentioned that in her in her speech and i was just thinking wow these um what is it that the handful or the the well at least the handful plus other people could have could have potentially kept kept kirsten she was also Um, wearing her her uh her comp gear yeah she wasn't in like a, you know, um, usually people, when they know they're going, they get dressed up, you know, but she was in her comp gear. She was in her ready to go play, you know? I, I don't know if she knew she was gone or what, but yeah, she was in her comp gear, which surprised me a little bit. It was yep. very surprising. And I, but to me, it, it just didn't make sense mm-hmm. because it's like, if you know that all of these people want that Felicia in itself is the glue that holds, you know, that holds that other side together, or not that, but but that everybody's very fond of her, mm-hmm. you know, then you take away one of their numbers. Like, what? if you know that Felicia's not in your alliance... Yeah, get rid of her. You know that, get rid of her, because mm-hmm. you know that Felicia has more of a social, you know, of a social game with everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, to say, I... I I'm glad that Felicia's still there. She's been hilarious to to watch, you know. Oh, for athletes. sure. To me, I, I'm so. glad she's there too. Uh, but I agree with you. Kirsten had nobody, you know. And, and in these in these games, when you see that one person that's just like desperate for a friend, desperate for like just bring me in. I want to play this game. 
they, they, you know, if you're the one that's like, okay, let's get you, let's keep you here, let's rally. If you're the one to do that, you're the one that she's locked in with you. You know, she knows she'd be gone if it wasn't for you. She's locked in. Get that number on your side, pull her in, say, hey, listen, we're going to build. Let's go build together. Let's get those numbers. Let's do something. But everyone just kind of shunned her away. You know, see you later. You know, you're, you're gone 13 to zero. See you later. I, I think in, in a situation like that, you want to try to at least build. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they did try to build or not, but you try to build with her. Say, hey, listen, get in here. Let's go. Let's, uh, let's push forward together. Um, now, I got a question for you. Ceri's on your season. What do you do? Do you, what's your, what do you do? Do you try to work with her? Do you try to get rid of her? No, I, I couldn't. I would, I would have to get rid of her. You There's have just to. no way. I mean, you, you just have to. Mm-hmm. It, it, she is known for, I mean, getting you far. Like, well, it depends if I wanted to win, right? Like, if I just wanted to, like, make jury maybe be top four, then Ceri all the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you got to play to win. I mean, there's no other way. There's no other reason to play, you know? No, there's there's definite people play for second all the time. People yeah, play. but I mean, if you're going there, like, you gotta you gotta play to win, man. Like there's you know, I don't want to come second. I don't want to come jury. Like who cares? Put me to jury. Who cares? You know, I'm in jury. Cool. Like I I want the win. I want the title. You know. So uh, I, I'm with you. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I just think um, as, as much as I would love to, I've, I've also seen people play with her and yeah, they're not, they're not winning. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. So to me, it's like uh, you get them out and this goes to anybody listening, watching this video right now. If you ever play a game with a vet, it doesn't matter who it is, you know, they're going to miss you. That's what they do. That's why they're brought back because they're good at what they do. They're just there to miss you. That's it. They're going to make you believe that you're, you know, that they're, you're on their side. They, you know, all that fun stuff. They're you're a tool in their toolbox. That's all you are to them. They're coming back a second time. They're not making that same mistake. They're there to win. They're going to cut you no matter what. They don't care about you. You're going to be like, Oh wow, this is Suri. I want to play with her. I want to be her friend when she's saying, Oh, this is whoever that's a tool in my toolbox. I can't wait to cut them and win at the end. It's that's just the reality of it. Okay. So anybody watching this video, if you ever uh, end up on a show, it doesn't matter what it is, survivor challenge, big brother, amazing race, whatever you want to play. And there's a vet there. The, the only play is you get them out right away. Do not let them build unless it's me. Of course, if I member in the house, let me build, let me cook. Uh, we're best friends, you know, anybody else, including Jess, get rid of them. You know, that's all I'm going to say. So, uh, yeah, you want to, you want to, you, you can't let them build once they get the momentum. And, and I'll tell you something right now, uh, for anybody that's go- going back a second time, third time, whatever it is, they're more afraid of you than you are of them because they they have an ego. They have an ego that they don't want to be out right away. They have something to prove. They want to win. Uh, so they're afraid. They're afraid too. So don't worry about that. And like I said, just get rid of them. Don't let them build. Don't let them cook. Uh, Suri is amazing at what she does. If you give her that momentum, those friendships, like look at Kirsten, what she said on the way out. She said, uh, Julie said, who are you most shocked or hurt by or whatever? I don't remember what the question was. And she said, Suri. Do you know why she says Suri? Because Suri is so good socially. I'm making you believe that you're her best friend that when you get voted out and it's like, man, I, I thought I had Suri, you know, and that one stings the most because you think you have her the most um it's stuff like that man uh Suri is very good at what she does got to get rid of her as much as i want to see her play like trust me i want her in the house i want to see her play i want you know i'm enjoying it as a player you gotta you know it's she's gotta go yeah. period she's gotta I go i i mean i i i agree with that and at the same time yeah i mean i don't know not one player that has played with Sari and not said that they've felt betrayed by her. Mm-hmm. I mean, just watching the traders like right. cried, <laughs> you know, thinking like with what she did. And that was like hardcore, which is why I was so excited to see her play. But because I've seen that, because I know that mm-hmm. is like I would I would never because she I mean, she that's what she does. And and for the most part, she will treat you like family or make you feel seen or will have genuine feelings for Mm -hmm. you but that really won't mean anything because she will still cut cut oh in a second especially with her son in there especially with her son in there it's like you're the best you could be is third on her list you know and that's yeah so at this point i don't even want to hear i i don't i don't want to hear anybody say that they felt the most betrayed by sari because it's like are you kidding me? You knew she was a four-time Survivor player right. and you still decided to play with her. That is absolutely 100% your fault. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... Now, a lot of... Be mad. A lot of people will say, oh, she's a big threat keeper in the house. You know, keep her as a shield in front of you. It, it does not with Suri. 
You, you, you got to get rid of these players, man. You can use someone else as a shield. Anybody else, do not let her cook. Do not let her build. Uh, any vet that comes in, don't use them as a shield. Just get rid of them. See you later. Move on. Find somebody else in the house. Anybody else. Uh, but yeah, I, I love that she's there. So Riley makes an eight-person alliance. I mean, uh, do we really have to talk about that? That's that's half the house. I mean, you know, it, that's, that's never going to last. Yeah, never going to last. Yeah. They never, they never do. I mean, they had one on my season. Um they were called hateful. I mean, grateful. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, that literally, just a little slip there. It was a little, yeah, just a little slip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that literally came tumbling down after like week two, like week three, right. it was, it was completely downhill by, by week two, everybody wanted, we're targeting each other. So and that, that, yeah. that's wild. That's usually what happens. I, I feel like the, the first week or two, people build these big alliances just to have that safety net. You know, if you're in the in the group, okay, we're safe for a couple of weeks. Anybody out of the group is in danger. But they always fold because after the first week or two, you find who you really like in the house. You know, the first week, everyone's just like, yo, uh, add me in this group. I'm in this group. We're, we're all safe together. You know, we all love each other. But it's all just fake, right? Until you find where you actually, who the people you actually like. You're like, yo, I actually like this person. Why would I get, you know, I mean, I trust this person i vibe with them whatever it is but the first week or so it's always these giant alliances just because you know it's a safety thing um and uh, yeah i know they're gonna crumble hard uh i mean it's yeah, so very, hard. oh yeah <laughs> yeah and and i, I, I want to talk uh jared as a player we kind of talked about him a little bit um the guy is just all over the place he's made so many mistakes but one thing I, there's one thing i like uh, there's the pros and cons to it. I like that Ceri's there to kind of like live coach him. Nobody else has that 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 benefit, you know. Where if someone makes a mistake, they don't have someone that's genuinely in their corner, like an actual coach saying, "Hey, cut that out." You know, you said when you left the room, you said you were gonna talk later. Why are you telling people that? Nobody needs to know that. Just do it. You know, why are you why are you opening your mouth too much? Stop talking too much. You know, stop doing this. Stop doing that. She's live coaching him while he's playing. That is a big advantage for the guy, but he's still so bad that. You know, it's like it doesn't really. It's just like in one ear, out the other. Um, but yeah, she's there. Like you know, he's making mistakes on the fly, and that and that's normal because these people aren't. You know, they're, they're learning as they go. You know, they're gonna make mistakes. We all did. I did. You did. Everyone does. You know, everyone makes mistakes as they play. But you learn on the fly. But he has someone like you know his mom, Sari, going, "Hey, you, you know when you did this, cut that out. You know, don't do that again." And and it's like, okay, he's gonna obviously listen. Or one, that's his mom. Two, it's Sari. Like. You know, if you're playing with your mom, your dad, whatever, that's a bonus on its own. But when it's someone that's as smart and as good as Sari, that advice goes even further. She's like, yo, man, yeah, you don't need to do that. You know, stop coming over here. Stop doing that. Do this, do that. And it gives them that that live coaching in the house, which is like, it's, it's, it's just, there's, you can't put a price tag on that. That's huge. You know, to have a live coach in there with you, that's genuinely in your corner in the same house every single day. It's huge. Um, but the guy is just so bad. I mean, and I mean this with all respect. I have no disrespect to the guy. I, I like him. I, I like Jared. I'm cheering for him. He's just so bad, man. Like everything that comes out of his mouth, it's just like, why, man? Why are you doing this? But I'm cheering for him. I like him. You know, I do like him. But uh, very bad player. Uh, what are your Thank thoughts you. on? What are your thoughts on him as a player? I mean, I I kind of uh, agree. Like like I said, I think we talked about it. It's just. He, he puts his foot in his mouth. I think it's yeah. it's a, interesting that whole handful and the um what are they called? Um The Phalanx Five? No, it's the handful and then it's the eight. So how, what oh. um the name of the eight but that Jared's in because he's not part of the handful. But sure. you know, um I think it's very funny how they chose these people and it's just so this is why I'm so glad that there's older people in the house. Um it, you know, you have the professors or you know what they call themselves, you know, ready to just school these these little kids which i think is insanely hilarious because the way that riley put together hers was like oh these are the strongest people and these are going to be the comp beasts and these are nobody's one not one right. you know not one thing and here we have hysom like pretty much who's going to be the next comp beast, you know, be yeah. the king or whatnot, which I, I absolutely love to see because it was unexpected. And these kids just didn't think <laughs> that, you know, someone outside of their little clique wasn't, wasn't going to do anything, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the thing. Perception is uh, is people's reality in there, right? And if you perceive these people as these comp beasts or whatever it is, um, and you think it's like they looked right past. Is it his Sam? I don't know how to say his name right. I apologize. Hi yeah. Hi some. Hi some. And uh, you know the guy's in shape. He's you know a smart guy, and they looked right past him. You know because of his age. You know. Um, they're going to regret that. They're going to regret that. I'll tell you right now, that same thing happened to me. Uh, you know, they looked, I was 31 years old when I played, thought I was old. And I'm like, listen, bud, these guys have no idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk. Okay. So let's talk about, this is a, a, a you know, a, a, com, um, a topic. So they had a player that got expelled, uh, yesterday, yesterday, day before day, two days ago. Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday. So he got, uh, expelled yesterday and, um, you know, obviously he said, last so night. Whenever it was, I think it was a couple nights ago, whatever it was. Last night, the the night before. Yeah, it was on Wednesday. Yeah. So, um, obviously he said something you should never, ever say it's, it's, it's just never an option. It should never be in anybody's vocabulary. Um, and he got expelled rightfully. So, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on the whole thing? I mean, his reaction. And then there was another video that came up with, uh, McCole, I believe saying it as well. Uh, there was some controversy on that as well. Um, I want to know, I, I know it's, it's a, probably a touchy con, um, topic. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Just, uh, what, what do you think of the whole situation? Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was part of the new, you know, code of conduct mm -hmm. and it was written in, you know, in the bylaws or whatnot, and it was violated and he was taken out. The, um, I think what's very important to note is that, um, and, and there's a lot of views on this, obviously, um, that big brother players should not have to tolerate that for game's sake. They should not be the one taking a bullet in any it, during any situation when it comes, you know, uh, to to something this, uh, you know, this serious. And whether or not he, may, I mean, it, I think Jared explained it, whether or not he meant it in a malice, you know, out of malice or if it was just plain ignorance. Um, again, it's not the house guest's uh, responsibility to have to check you mm -hmm. on that the rule was broken. Hundred uh, percent. I know. I know what you meant by, um, and I believe it was uh, Kirsten to to Jared, um, because I guess it both happened. While Sorry, Jared, it was Kirsten. Both of this happened when when Jared was in in the room. Um, I I don't like to comment on these things because obviously right. I'm not black, and so right. um, the thing is that said is that unless you yourself are black, you just don't say it. It's not, 100%. it's not something that could ever, uh, could ever be, you know, could ever be said, should ever be said. Um, you know, the, the Kirsten and the Jared thing, when they said it, it would it, in conversation or when she said it in conversation, it's kind of, I, and I, I read this on a tweet from several, you know, uh, people. It's like, if, if you can't reclaim it, if you never ha can't re well, if you can't reclaim it, you should never say it because if it was never said, it, it's their, it's ultimately their word. They hmm. use it the way they they see fit, and it's, some people do in that community do see it as it should never be said, and other people are saying right. that they they reclaim it. They 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 want to take the negativity out of it, um, but there's no consensus. You know there. Um, as in all uh, yeah. ethnic races and communities, you know, and so yeah, I'll say I'll say that it's not the same. It's not the same thing. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up, and I, I'll jump in here um, because again, you know, I mean, my opinion on it doesn't really matter because you know I, I can't. I just, I can't, I can't, it's not, you know, but I'll tell you something, man. One thing I, I think one, first I want to say Luke's an idiot. He's a fucking idiot. Like, they, like, let's get that out of the way. Never should have said it no matter what ever, not in the house, out the house. Just let's just get that out of the way, you know, period. Um, now here's, here's another point. We were talking about this on the stream. Um, you know, it was, it's a rule in the house. You can't say certain things. You can't do certain things. And yes, I agree. You know, um, it, I, I'm not black. I'm not going to say it. I, I'll never say it. It's not going to happen. But you know they uh, that, they'll say it amongst themselves, and that's fi that's fine, that's fair. Is but the question comes up: Is it okay to say it in the house because there's a rule there that says you can't say things like that? So 
Should it be a rule across the board for nobody can say it? Obviously, not everybody can say it, but I'm just saying, like, should it just be a word that just is not tolerated in the house, period? You know, no matter what. Because you got to look certain situations. You know, if you're at work, you're working at, I don't know, whatever. You're working at work. Are you going to go up to your boss, say, you know, they're black, you're black. Are you going to, are you going to say that to them at work? You know, if they're, you're at a, a high end CEO, you know, firm, you, you're probably, you know, okay, this is not the place to say it, right? Probably. I don't know. Right. So would it be like one of those situations where it's like, you know, maybe this isn't the environment. I don't know. It's hard for me to, to, to talk about it and comment on it because I really don't know. I don't have the answer. I'm just trying to bring, you know, a question up about it. Um, is there a right time or place in a situation? I don't know. You know, in a situation like this, because it's a televised show, should it be like just it should not be used, period? Or, you know. I mean. It's a tough, con- you know, it is. But I want to bring it up a, because it it's something tough, big that happened. It a tough it's a tough convo for, a, you know, for me to have. But the thing is, is that we also saw it from one black person to another. Correct. Yeah. A regular context of speaking. Um, and it was maybe what was maybe normal when they talked to each other and she still caught herself trying and, and, and kind of, calm, right. you know, like, like shut it down on her own accord, you know? So, um, it, she's not saying it to a white person in the house, For sure. like, literally like to the ease that Luke said it was like it, that came out way too hundred percent and he said slip of the tongue and it's like why is that word even, exactly e- even that easy to say like, 100 percent have a you know i have a black husband i have a black child that word has never come out of my mouth right right you know even even in explaining to my to my family that is black what happened this this past week I said he got expelled because he said the N word. I didn't. Right. I didn't say the word. I didn't like. We all realized what you know. Yep. They knew what I was about to say, but it just does not come out that easily. So I think like it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. You know, yeah, no one's gonna say that. Mm-hmm. No one's gonna say that to their boss, but they're not talking to their boss. They're talking. I agree, and that's why I'm. Uh, you yeah. know, to the same to the same person. It's like I. It you know it could be the same um, as like I have you know LGBTQ plus uh, friends family members um, you know I identify as a pansexual whatever the case I've never said the f word you yeah, know no hundred percent I have tons of gay friends that call each other that you know what I mean would I ever say it no because it's not in my vocabulary mm-hmm. to to say that do I hear it sure will I hear it somewhere else yeah is it considered a, a slur yes it is so it's th- yeah these these are just like conversations that we could probably have for hours and not everybody will be on board right. someone will or- always have a say yeah. however in this case when we're talking about you know hate speech because it is not their word to reclaim it automatically that's what it, mm-hmm. it comes out as yeah that that, and, should, and, that word should not have been said yeah and i just want to like double down on this like luke's a fucking idiot never should have ever been said and uh you know he's, he's a fucking he's, he's just an idiot he's just an absolute idiot and uh yeah he deserved to be kicked out 100 percent. i agree with that 100 percent. like there's no defending it at all uh but yeah it, it's a tough convo and, and uh and you know i don't know the answer i'm not gonna pretend to know the answer uh, it's a you know i don't know and uh but i definitely you know it's something we did have to bring up it happened in the week and uh i just wanted to hear your opinion on it i know it's a tough conversation to have but uh it, you know it's it's it happened okay um now i want to move on and say uh I got two questions for you, Jess. One, mm-hmm. who's the sleeper of the season? Who is the one that you think is just right now nobody's paying attention to? They're like, and and they're the one to watch. But nobody nobody has an eye on them. Nobody's paying attention. But it's like, yo, they, yeah, we got to watch out for this one. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm just going to say America. No, that was mine. No. Yeah. No, I mean, she's one of my winner picks. Uh. And I think rightfully so, because look, she, she has a good grasp on the game. Mm -hmm. She was actually the one who looked at who was on the block and was like, we, why aren't we getting rid of Felicia? Mm -hmm. Like she's the one making these 
you know, she's clocking, she's clocking these things. Yeah. Um, and had she, had it not been week one, had she had a little bit more pull, I feel like maybe she would have done it. It's hard to kind of, you know, like work that hard to, to flip, you know, to flip a vote. On right. I mean, week, week so one is, that, it, you know, yeah. It's not the time to do it. It's just the anybody but me mentality. Well, okay, you know, you don't know these people yet. It's like, it's this person. All right, I'm not going to stick my neck out and ruin my game and be potentially out second week because of some person I don't even know, you know? Exactly. Uh, for sure. I'm with you on that. I like America. America is, um, you know, she's apparently not on the feeds very much. But I don't know. I feel like she's there. She gets it. She understands. And that was someone I didn't have too many high. Like, I didn't really think much of, like, pregame. Uh, but I feel like she's gonna, I, I, I don't know, man. I hope so. I hope she, uh, just opens up her wings and, and turns out to be this great player. I think so. Yeah. Um, she is a little quiet. She's, mm -hmm. you know, she, she is a little quiet. Um, one of the reasons I liked her from her, from her bio was not only does she know, like, is she a super fan? Um, but she understands, she understands. And she said, that she is willing, you know, to cut and like backstab mm -hmm. and do the things that are necessary. I haven't seen that part of her. She right. seems very sweet right now. Like you said, she's really quiet. Maybe she's just like, I mean, I was very much that my first couple weeks as well, mm -hmm. because, you know, you don't want to put a massive target on your back if people are looking. Yep at each other if you know that someone's looking at someone else and the other person's looking here it's kind of like why why mess this up right now i'm just you know she she seems to be in good with yeah she's sides, let her cook two sides yeah, yeah. let her build I, let her like, build i'm just i'm just hoping that she does have something in her to actually backstab or lie or manipulate or do something we haven't seen that much of her but i like that I feel like when you don't see enough of somebody, they tend to surprise you. I agree. There's I think especially early on, hard. especially early on, if you're if you're on TV too much, it's not a good sign. You want to be one that's kind of quiet under the radar. That means you're not in anybody's way. You're not in anybody's hair. You're not being talked about as a target. That means that's a good thing. Uh, if you're on the TV a lot, that means that you're in people's mouths. People are talking about you. People see you. People know you're what you're doing, shit like that. So uh, I like that as well. Um, yeah, she's my sleeper. She's my sleeper. I had, I didn't have much faith in her, like, you know, pre the, the bios and stuff. I didn't really see much. Uh, totally turned that around. Totally turned that around as of week one. Um, okay. Last question for you, Jess, who is your favorite slash, and it could be a different answer. Who's your favorite and who do you want to see win? It could be the same. Could be different. Oh gosh. Um, uh, I don't know. I still don't have, I don't necessarily have a favorite right now. I like a lot of people equally. Mm -hmm. I'm still on the, you know. It's like honeymoon still, phase. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's still, it's still really, really uh, early days. Mm -hmm. um, I liked, I liked Riley, but um, I feel like she completely massacred her first HOH. Like yeah. it, like it, it bombed. Yeah. I, at, like on a week where I feel like this was pretty easy, easy sailing. And uh, somehow she messed it up, you know, with mm -hmm. it being so much about like, I want this to be fair. And then she's <laughs> creating all of these alliances. And then she had a little bit of some type of HOH itis. And then she got paranoid. And then it became all of a sudden, just like she became the most, the massive target for, for this week. For, for, yeah. It's, for it's no, crazy. For absolutely zero reason. Because I feel like when you're the first HOH, you don't have to have it a target. You could just put both of those people up and just be like, hey, guys, whatever you want. I don't have a vote. I, I don't have a say anymore. But she like she made it her business mm -hmm. to like create and paint this target. Like what I say on my HOH, I want this person out. Yeah, you we know? week one should be the easiest. I mean, it's it's nobody knows anybody yet. It should be such an easy and week. It wasn't even her, and it wasn't even her choice. It was right. Like, these people were already nominated. Yep. It's, it's you, you had, this should have been an easy week where you could have just taken two people out and said, I'm so sorry. Hey, I could yep. only take two people out. Like good luck, both of you. But yep. no, it was just it, so completely unnecessary. And so, yeah, that was just kind of a, 
a wash on that. And then this this idea that she keeps on saying that if she does something, that people are indebted to her. And I'm like, girl, when? Yeah. Like, did, like I mean, act of good faith, great. But if, yeah. you, if you have me on the block and you save me or you do whatever... You you still had me on the block. Like I'm not indebted to you right. in any which way, shape, or form. You know, I think it's, that was. I mean, that wasn't the question. The question was who my favorite was. I kind of told you who the you went, flop of the week. Yeah. Was. So we we were talking about your favorite. And you went. So I, let's just okay. So you don't <laughs> like Riley. Okay. No, I do like. I <laughs> like. The thing is, is that I no. do like her. Um, I just don't think she's a great player. Right, of course. And, and that's two different you know, things, of course. Nothing here is personal. Like, whatever we say is nothing personal. I think, I think she went in where people, like, truly loved her. She was, like, loved by the whole house mm-hmm. to then now being massively targeted by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of, of player right now, the the best player hands down is still Sari. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's and regardless of her being a massive target. Um, she has been able to put shields in front of her. Like right now, Hysam would probably be looked at first in her. Izzy would be looked at first in her, you know? Um, and so I think that she's played it masterfully like nobody is playing like her. Corey, I feel like is doing a lot of good damage control. I feel like he's talking, he's doing his rounds of talks. He went from someone who was going to be very targeted to someone who isn't it, people are like maybe starting to warm up to him and for that I could probably um give him a few mm-hmm you know points but right now who's who's playing better than Sari? Mm-hmm. i like yeah so i i like okay so here's the thing for me i think my favorite player right now i mean Sari's great i mean i you know i think Sari's everyone's answer um felicia felicia F- sorry felicia she's she's i mean i love her i think um i think uh cory's gonna do well i think he's gonna come out of his shell soon i like cory uh who else was there uh red i don't know man something about red man i like him I he's just this red. cool guy you know he's you don't see much of him but i just i don't know something about it. i just hope he's not he doesn't like i hope he's not like the jasmine in the drs you know what i mean when they are in the dr and she like upped her like accent and it was like i just hope like you know we get red you know my guy you know uh, i, met I like jasmine red this past week i met jasmine this past week and i will say she still had a pretty yeah intense eh? accent like I don't think she was playing it up at all. She I just was, feel like has a pretty. I just feel like you hear her conversations, and, she, and then she gets in the dr, and it's like boom, accent times a hundred. You know, and I get like, it because it's like the yelling, the yelling portion, or maybe. And no disrespect to her. I mean, I'm sure she's great or something like that. I just you know, uh, but I like uh, I like red. I like uh, I like Sari. Obviously, I don't know Sari. I mean, she's she's entertaining, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just, I feel without Jared, she would be lost. I feel like she'd be so lost because she doesn't have to go out and get that information. She just can sit down, hang out with Felicia and get the information given to her. Like she doesn't have to do anything. And I don't like that because I want to, I want to be able to say like, yo man, she's crushing it. She's out there doing her thing. She's, you know, it's just, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I, 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 I admit I'm not watching the feeds, so I don't know fully what's going on in there. But every time I see anything or hear anything, it's just, it, I don't know, man. I just feel like she's not doing, there's just something missing for me, man. But I love her and I want to see her do well. Yeah. I just, I don't think she's you're killing watching it. watching feeds? No. Wow. You're missing, you're, you're. And I hear they're good. Like a true casual. Yes. I did. I watched the feeds the first night and then that was it. I don't know. I was gone to, I was gone to a cottage for uh, three days. So I didn't get any of the feeds and I came back and I was just, it just didn't jump back in. And I, and listen, I'm loving the cast. I think the cast is amazing. Um, I hear the feeds are really, really, really good. I mean, they've been down for a couple. So to be honest, I haven't really missed much of the feeds cause I watched it the first night, maybe first day, you know, and then I was gone for a few days and the feeds have been down for a couple nights. So I don't think I missed much, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's the Suri show production loves Suri. I mean, rightfully so. That's the anchor. I mean, you're going to use it. I think it's a Suri show. I think she's amazing at what she does. 
I just haven't seen it yet, man. And and uh, and you know, I, I know it's coming. I know it's there. She's 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 Siri. She's amazing. I just I haven't seen enough of it yet myself. Without Jared, I mean, Jared giving her the information, uh, it, it, it almost put her in the position where she could sit back and she's like, I don't have to do anything. I got my information bot right there. He's gonna go out. He's on the other side. He's gonna tell me everything I need to know, and I could sit here and just hang out, you know. So, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, it's that's just the way I see it, but. Uh, I love Suri. I do love Suri. I hope I hope she does well. I don't see her winning. I don't see Jared winning. Uh, I don't. So I would see someone like a Corey, America. That's like it's it's uh, you know that's who I'm. I could see winning one of those. I could see winning. But I mean, what do I know, right? This is week one. I mean, anything can change. You know, it could be battle back. I mean, but one thing I'll say is uh, Kirsten's definitely not coming back. Uh, anytime you know Julie Chen gives you any information on the inside about you know Suri and her son, uh, there's a zero percent chance she's coming back. There's no buyback because she just wouldn't be able to say that, right? So I'll tell you one thing. You know, if Julie says, oh, you know, she she keeps everything to her chest, then you know there's a chance. But as soon as she says that stuff, that's a big twist. Uh, Kirsten's gone. She's gone for the season. But uh, Jess, I always love doing these, sitting down with you, chatting with you. You're you're absolutely you're amazing. I love you very much. You already know, very very good friend of mine. Yes. And uh, Jess, anything you want to say on the way out? Anything you want to plug? Just go for it. Mention it. Say it. Jess has a podcast. She kills it. <laughs> and make sure you check it out. Make sure you check it out. So Jess, what's going on? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not as um, I'm not as consistent as you are on your on your channels, Bruno, because I'm more on. I would say I probably am your channel way more than I'm on my channel. So um, I love you. But, <laughs> but that being said, I do have a podcast. It's called Girl Let's Agree to Disagree on YouTube, G L A T D for short. That's kind of what we call it. And it's uh, usually myself, my um, my co host, uh, Busy Blue, who is a podcaster in the Big Brother uh, Real Housewives. Uh, uh, arena and um and then we have um special guests from time to time we don't have a specific date sometimes we just like we literally just go on whenever we want which is why i say i'm not consistent with it but it's also we all have lives and you know sometimes yeah, it's if, busy if we get on it's usually live so definitely um whoever wants to go on youtube look us up girl let's agree to disagree um subscribe uh, click that notification handle because we randomly go live. Like, I don't know. I give people about an hour notice <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I'm horrible. But it doesn't pay the bills it's for the way me, it goes. So, yeah. you know, you, it's, it's like, what, what can you do? I'm going to echo everything she said about this channel. Click the like, do the note. She did it. Well. She's better at this than I am. I'm just like, yo, whatever she said, do it here. All right. So yeah, no, click the follow button. Like. Yeah, there it is. Click, click, like, subscribe. Hit that notification Boom. bell on Bruno's, uh, on Bruno's page. Boom. So you know when he's going. You don't go live on Twi on, t on YouTube, though. No, Twitch Twitch and Kick. That's where it's at these days. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, if you guys want to do the watch parties with us, we're doing, like, the challenge. Uh, Big Brother US. We do Big Brother Canada. That's on kick.com slash Capone Gaming. I'll put the link below. And every night, man, six nights a week, we're on Twitch, at least, you know, gaming, chatting. Jess is there. We're playing games I'm together. You can see. Mm -hmm. Doing I'm our saying. thing. You, yeah. you, you have that consistent you have that consistent thing going um what will be consistent though for girl let's agree to disagree is that we are going to be interviewing we are a cbs media affiliate so we are going to be interviewing um the evicted house guests every friday mm -hmm. um however our kirsten interview got postponed actually to everybody so yeah you know, next week right read her yet yeah so it got postponed to next week so i'm kind of like you know one eyebrow up in mm -hmm. trying to figure that one out but i don't think there's a battle back i just i don't know maybe i don't know because of the expulsion no, i don't I mean, think that yeah i think i think maybe the big news was was luke and i don't think it was going to be fair to her for everybody to just keep asking her luke questions right. and it really should be about right. her gameplay um although i also feel like that probably just should have been something that cbs would tell us to not mention mm -hmm. but that wasn't given either so i guess we'll just keep speculating 
Yeah. That's all you can do. That's what we do best. Uh, Jess, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. You're amazing. Guys, make sure you check out her channels. Jess is, is incredible. Help her out. Check her out. I love you all. And Jess, thank you so much for doing this. You're amazing. You're the best. Thank you. And uh, we'll chat soon. Later, later, later. Bye.